Welcome back to Season 2 of our Manchester United Rebuild. Last year went fairly well back on FIFA 17. We got a 4th place finish which gave us Champions League football this season, but we lost in the Community Shield and FA Cup Finals on penalties and that was a real blow. Things have really moved on behind the scenes here. Alexis Sanchez and Victor Lindelof have both joined the club, while Rooney, Ibrahimovic and McTerrian have all left Old Trafford. These transfers have definitely helped to balance our squad out and it's improved a lot from this last year to this this season. Our goals for this season are to win at least two of the four trophies that we're entering and we also want to build for next season where we're going to try and win all four. Our team is now so good that we have three different front threes that we can try in pre-season. We have Lukaku, Sanchez and Bailey which offers pace with a target man. We have Rashford, Martial and Lingard which offers pure pace and we also have a younger option with people like Callum Gribbin moving into the left wing position. Knowing FIFA, the pace option is probably going to be the best one but I'm sure we'll find a space for all three of these front threes this season. You can see our attack is already pretty good, so a lot of our budget this year is going to go on defence. We're going to have to pick if we want to go for the ball-playing Amaric Laporte, who's currently at Athletic Bilbao, or do we want to go for the quick and more powerful Rafa Varane? There is of course also Southampton's Virgil van Dijk, but he's not quite as good as either of these two or current centre-back Eric Bailly. Laporte looks like the best choice, so let's hope that he can settle in Manchester. We're going to pay about £50 million and this could prove to be a bargain. It also leaves us with some good budget and we're going to use that to pick up Alejandro Grimaldo. He's going to be benching the injury prone Luke Shaw for most of this season. Now our team is looking truly world class and we thought we were done with transfers until in pre-season this happened. Pogba is going to be out for two months. Who could we actually replace him with that wouldn't complain about being on the bench most of the season once Pog was back? Well, we decided to go for Frankie de Jong. He's been linked to United every year since 2018, so we're going to sign him in 2017 instead. I think we're now fully ready for the season, where we're going to be opening the season against West Ham. Okay, so let's actually talk about the game for a minute rather than the season we're playing. FIFA 18 might not be quite as good as FIFA 17, but it is still such a massive step forward from FIFA 16, 15 and 14 that it's almost unbelievable. Really, we're probably due a step forward like this anytime soon and hopefully EA can give us another one. One of the coolest things about going back and playing older FIFAs is looking at some of the squads. For example, Lukaku's just scored a nice finish there past Joe Hart. I had absolutely no memory of him ever playing for West Ham United. I remember it and Burnley and maybe it spurs a little bit and definitely a Celtic now but West Ham was a total blank point in my memory. Anyway back to actually talking about the match that's happening and we're playing quite well. Lukaku getting a lot of shots, he's dropping off like a target man or a false nine and he's linking up the play pretty well. Alexis Sanchez we still haven't quite figured out how to use him because he's not particularly fast. He's not really strong enough to play through the middle especially when we've got Lukaku and we like using a target man so we can't really get him into the game that much. The good thing is though we are making a lot of shots which was a real problem on some of the older FIFAs we played. FIFA 13 was really hard to actually get any chances, FIFA 14 was alright and 15 was terrible for it but it looks like in our first match of our second season we have managed to use our big squad to actually secure an opening day win. The man I was most surprised with how good they were was definitely Emmerich Laporte. On the modern fevers, he's known for being quite slow and his passing isn't really that important, but we were absolutely pinging the ball around. His long passing was actually really, really good. Out of all the players that we had last year and this year, I think Ander Herrera made the biggest step up between the seasons. He went from being a quite average backup midfielder to now being almost as good as Paul Pogba at 85 rating. Score a nice corner goal right there, Laporte jumping highest, and that would be a second win from two games. Were we actually going to do what we said at the start of the video and win the Premier League? Well, who knows, we had to keep it going against Stoke in this match. Frankie de Jong almost getting his first assist for Manchester United, another player that's actually surprisingly good. In fact, this entire team was really fun to use. I recommend if you ever go back to play FIFA 18, which is definitely a game I'm going to recommend at the end of this video, then you do give some of these players a go. Frankie de Jong nearly getting his first goal right there, but we all know how overpowered Jack Butland was on FIFA 18. If you don't remember, well he's like a 6 foot 7 goalkeeper who was 81 rated and he was by far the best goalkeeper you could use inside Ultimate Team. Every team had players like him, Kante when he was low rated, Chris Smalling, these guys were almost unbeatable at the back. Well, Butland proving that he is still quite good there in Karimu. That was a great save. Lukaku's going to turn and smash one from distance off the post. That could definitely have been a goal of the season if that had found the bottom corner. So for the first time this season, we can actually play Paul Pogba in the league. So let's hope that he can get off to a decent start in this last 10 minutes. Well, he's on the ball right here. Does some step overs, cuts outside, cuts back inside and unleashes that. That's exactly what we've been missing from our midfield. Third game of the season, Paul Pogba announces his return. 
absolutely insane into the Carabao Cup. Another one of the competitions that we're trying to win. Alexis, they're trying to match Paul Pogba, but things don't go very well. Just before half time, we give away a penalty. NASA Chadley steps up and it's saved by David De Gea. This is starting to look like it could be our season. We get in behind right here. Alexis Sanchez one on one with Sam Johnston, cuts inside, cuts outside, hits the post. It really hasn't been a great start to the season for Alexis Sanchez, but we keep pushing into extra time. Lingard to Ander Herrera. We said he's improved. Not quite as much as Paul Pogba, though, because that would have found the top corner. And that means things are going to go to penalties. We don't have the best set of penalty takers, but they are definitely better than West Brom. So we are definitely favourites to win this, despite it being in front of the West Brom fans. They send up the teenager Leko first. David De Gea with the arm movements, but Leko chips it the other way straight into the bottom corner. Next up, Ander Herrera, 1-1, and it's going to be saved by Ben Foster. We are in the era of ABBA being used in the cup, so we actually had two penalties in a row. We missed one, we saved one, but could we do the same to West Brom? Dawson stepped up, and we did exactly the same. They scored the first one and missed the second one. It didn't really matter, though, because Lingard would miss his penalty, and we were out of the Carabao Cup in the second round. But if I'm being honest, West Brom weren't as weak as I was expecting. They were first in the Premier League after five games. And even after 14 games, they were still in the top four ahead of Liverpool, Arsenal and West Ham. They were a real force this season. One of those teams that wasn't doing so well was Arsenal. Even though they've signed players like Marco Royce, they actually had a really nice squad that going into this game I was quite scared about. They had McTerrien playing out wide, Marco Royce in behind Lacazette. This was a real FIFA 18 dream team, the sort of thing you would put together on Ultimate Team. But Matic was our destroyer, and Mustafi just kept the ball from going through to Alexis Sanchez to score against this former club. Lacazette would turn, but again, Matic would get involved. El Elneny's shot would hit the crossbar, and we would just about get it away. It fell again to El Elneny. He found Shaka, and his finesse shot went just wide. But thankfully for us, we did manage to injure Lacazette at some point in that move. Matic linking up with Ander Herrera and De Jong playing in midfield again because Pogba's injured yet again, nearly found another chance. They're getting some nice football going in this midfield now. But so were Arsenal. Royce and Gibbs would link up. Gibbs would do some crazy turns. He'd find Lacazette and it's a great save from De Gea to get that out for a corner. Herrera steals the ball from Ozil and we've got possibly just seconds left. He does an amazing, perfectly threaded through ball to Martial. One on one, surely. He doesn't even make the goalkeeper have a save. He doesn't hit the post. He just hits it straight wide and that's going to end nil-nil. When you're a title chasing squad, you can't really miss out on beating mid-table fodder like Arsenal, especially when you've got people like Chelsea and Manchester City both on insane runs. Oxford City and Charlton also were on insane runs there in the semi-final of the Carabao Cup and Paul Pogba was disappointed by us not picking him because he was injured. I don't really understand that but that's one of the things that's never ever changed on FIFA. We got him back into the team for this match. Against Manchester City we needed him in there if we were going to do anything, especially because Manchester City were just a couple of points behind us in the table. Thankfully Aguero missed quite an easy chance and Rashford would get on the ball. He would play it to Lukaku, he would battle with Otamendi and his finesse shot would just just go wide of Claudio Bravo's left post. We would counter-attack Alexis Sanchez and Rashford. We swapped them at half-time. We wanted them on the other side. And it seemed like it worked because finally, Alexis Sanchez scored a league goal for us after 20 games. Even Fernando Torres' run wasn't quite that long. Rashford would get on the ball, cut inside from the edge of the box. And that's going to be the winning goal. 2 nil up against Man City. The noisy neighbours have been absolutely silenced at Old Trafford. Marcus Rashford, the man to do it. That was a really nice goal. But for some reason, the game counted that as a Vincent Company own goal. I'm not too sure why because I thought Rashford had just smashed that straight into the corner but I guess there might have been a little deflection off company. This was Man City's three centre-back era and none of them were as good as Laporte. I mean look at the passing right there. It wasn't his pass that went astray but his movement on the ball was absolutely amazing. Grimaldo would find Lingard and Lingard would find Lukaku one-on-one. -on -one. We tried to pull it across to get Alexis a second goal but nothing could happen and we would just end up winning the game 2-0. A massive match when it comes to our title hopes. In fact, it was actually the game that put us into first place in the league, only by a single point, but it was a lead that we would carry on and well into the 30th game mark, with a couple more important games before the end of the year, including a return trip to Manchester City, a game against Arsenal, and some other minor teams that we should probably be beating. We had a real chance of getting this title. 
Manchester City, though, the big opponent that was going to stand in our way. We have just beaten them 2-0 a few matches ago, and now it's their turn to try and inflict some humiliation on us and get back into the title hunt. Gabriel Jesus started what could be a really bad match for us right there by finessing one straight into the top corner. Jesus would get on the ball again and he would score again just before half time. So going in 2 0 down is absolutely not part of our plan. We just couldn't get our midfield on the ball. Pogba, Rashford, Lukaku, even, they were all having to fight for every single touch that they got. Man City had absolutely changed their tactics. They were dominating the ball, they were scoring every chance they got. Things were not looking good for us. Jesus would nearly find someone else, but the Gea would head it and it would hit the post. I don't really know what went on there, but somehow we kept the ball out the net. Gundawan, he would find Mendy out wide, and that would be a free kick. But it was such a weak challenge, definitely not worth a second yellow card. And one of our most consistent midfielders was going to be missing for a couple of matches. There's always danger when De Bruyne gets on the ball, especially when he's got Aguero ahead of him, and that's going to be 3-0. He missed against this Old Trafford, but he definitely wasn't going to miss that one. Just to embarrass us even more, Pep Guardiola brings on Wilfred Bonny, and he manages the score. An absolute tactical masterclass from Pep Guardiola in this game. We had one chance later on right here, but Alexis would hit it straight at Edison. You can see why they've probably bought Edison and replaced someone like Claudio Bravo with him because he was absolutely unbeatable in the net today. That setback isn't going to put us off though. We now have three games left. We're going to beat Brighton 2-1. We're going to beat Bournemouth 2-1. And that means going into the Watford game, things are very tight at the top. Not only have we been caught by Manchester City, but we've also been caught by Chelsea and Spurs. And any one of those three teams can win in this final match of the season. We got a two-point lead over Spurs and just a one-point lead over Chelsea. Spurs have a much better goal difference than us, so even if we draw, Spurs can still win the league from third place. Things needed to get off to a great start because we need the three points. Rashford's dribbling run found Lukaku, and that's exactly what we got. His finesse shot, his jump into the Stratford end is exactly what Manchester United needed. All of a sudden, all the nerves went out of us. We knew that we had a real good chance of that. Alexis Sanchez really should have made it 2-0, and at halftime, we'd restricted Watford to zero shots. We couldn't quite score there from the corner, but Herrera would pick it up again. Pogba with a turn, and he can't find the top corner on this occasion. So we're still pushing for this second goal. We're not settling for just one. And finally, Alexis and Martial link up. Two players that have done basically nothing all season to secure this win. Martial pointing to his own name, and they nearly linked up again in the 90th minute. But unfortunately for us, Herrelio Gomez would dive at Martial's feet and prevent the 3-0 win. We didn't need three goals, though. We just needed the three points, and that's exactly what we got. In a nice bit of symmetry, we have one of Alex Ferguson's signings lifting the first trophy since Alex Ferguson left the club, and we are Premier League champions for the first time in six years. What a result that is for both Florentino Toscani and also for Manchester United. But we're not done yet. We still have an FA Cup final against Leicester City. Now, we've had a bit of history against Leicester. We managed them in the first mega career. They knocked us out of the Community Shield last season, and we really won to get our own back by winning a double here against them at Wembley. We were going all out attack basically from minute one. We wanted to get the early goal because we know the AI in cup competitions is absolutely crazy. And you can see what I mean right there. A looped cross straight on Slimani's head and the perfect header in off the post. Nothing we can do about that. The rest of the game was just us trying to attack and get our first goal. Carrick got on the ball, gave it to Lukaku. He turned past Robert Huth and his shot went just into the side netting. So close from us right there. Leicester would have chances of their own though. With how attacking we are, we kind of expected that. And did he shot being palmed over the bar by David De Gea? I've forgotten how many times he saved us this year. Lukaku linking up there with Ander Herrera. Alexis Sanchez through the middle. Surely 65 minutes gone. Great save there from Schmeichel. He was on just as good form as David De Gea. For some reason, we've got Nemanja Matic taking our corners and Rashford reaches highest and Schmeichel reaches it away. That's a great save yet again. We have another corner from the other side. This time Alexis has taken it and Laporte's going to reach it and head it wide. We're so dangerous from corners that anything really is going to be a threat. But Lukaku, if he can get past Huth here, he's in and he does. Hits it with his left foot and Schmeichel saves it out for yet another corner. That means we've got another chance of scoring. Herrera this time doesn't even have to jump, just heads it straight into the side netting and we finally get our equaliser about 70 minutes after Leicester scored and we are level. 
going into extra time, just before half time in extra time in fact, Matic to Herrera, he came on after about 60 minutes and he has changed the game for us and Herrera. Ever since that red card he's been pretty bad but in this match it seems like he's finally turning it on. That was the last chance of the game and you know what that means, this match also is going to go to a penalty shootout. Yet again, we have the better penalty takers, we're going to let Alexis Sanchez try and win this one for us. But with the form that Kasper schmeichel has been in, this is going to be tough. In fact, he saved the very first penalty right there with his chest. Slomani, the goal scorer, also had his penalty save. Great save there from David De Gea, clawing it out the air. Albrighton would step up, goes down the middle, and David De Gea is expecting it. So just as planned, it's all coming down to Alexis Sanchez. He goes down the middle, and Kasper Schmeichel jumps out the way of it, and Alexis Sanchez has won us the double. Celebrates with the Jamie Vardy celebration to add extra insult into injury. David De Gea does some crazy arm movements right there. I'm not too sure what really was happening, but that's it. We have won a double, just like we said at the start of this video. So hopefully that means next season we can actually go for that quadruple that we mentioned. Champions League, Carabao Cup, Premier League and FA Cup in what is going to be Florentino Toscani's last season as a manager. He's already said he's going to retire after this one. So that's going to be a massive season for everyone involved. Let's hope we can do it. And let's hope that you're here to see us lift more trophies on FIFA 19. But hopefully you'll be back. Subscribe if you want to see that. Like the video if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you soon. Thank you for watching. Really enjoyed playing this game. So thanks for giving me the opportunity to do so as a job. And I'll see you soon. Cheers and goodbye.